Hello and welcome to this T-Rex 5 course here with Sonic Academy. My name's Rory from Hyper Production and hopefully you've been watching the previous videos leading up to this one and should have quite a bit of knowledge about T-Rex 5 and what it is about. So the last couple of videos we've been focusing heavily on the mastering suite, i.e. the standalone version, which is what you're looking at now. So in this particular episode, we're going to be looking at how to export tracks and basically I'm going to be explaining about a few of the different options that are available to you. So we've got our track here, we've already finished mastering it, we've got all our little modules down the bottom here in our processing window and then we want to go and export, but firstly I'll just show you a quick bit of the track. I've been sleeping all my days away I got put of all the nonsense And I ain't got nothing to say Yeah, I've been losing focus Pouring rain, window pane I'll be staying in my night dress My hair's untamed, clothes I stay Diving into the house of rain Okay, so everything's nice and balanced. If you notice at the peak here on the meter, we're at minus 0 0.1 decibels, which is ideal for where we want to be. And then we want to go and export the track. So how do we do that? So first of all, we're going to go to the album assembly window. So you're going to click on this one here, which will then open up two tabs. Now, if you can't get back to the original window, because sometimes it can be a bit confusing, basically, if you look at the top here, it's almost like your internet browser. So you've got two tabs available to you. So if you want to go back to the original view, you press that. And then if you want to further get rid of these tabs at the top here you simply click the open assembly button again and then they will disappear but obviously we need to export the tracks so we're going to go to this one then you're going to be welcome up with this window if you've got multiple tracks to so say that you're mastering an album you will have plenty more tracks down this window here and then all these tracks will then be further sort of that one and then it will come up to this one and then that one and then that one as well so you can actually export them in various different ways you can export them as individual tracks or you can export it all as sort of one file then it's separated by cue points to say if you're doing something like an itunes release or something like that then you can also organize like that but just for the sake of this tutorial keep things nice and simple we're going to be showing you how to basically just export normally so if you want to zoom in to particular parts you've got three little toggles here so if you click this magnifying glass and then just select the region that you want to zoom in on it will then dial in closer to that bit as well. And if you want to come out of that, you simply just press minus and you can just do plus for it to do its own intervals within the zoom there as well. Then down below, obviously we've got our track here. So if you want to start naming the track, so let's just call this one people, let's call this one people do nothing. Okay, and then we're going to keep the start time to where it is because that's kind of how we did it in the pre-master. And then the duration, obviously we want it to end where it's ending. Artist name, we're going to call this one, let's call this one Sonic Academy. And then your ISRC code, which is your international standard recording code. So if you're releasing music into the commercial market, then you should have a, be given a code, basically. So if you're using services like TuneCore or something like that, you will be issued with one of these codes. But if not, just leave it as it is. That is perfectly fine. Copyright protection, probably always leave that enabled. It, I think I'm not too in, entirely sure what that actually does. I'm nor typically they normally just add a bit of a codec in there which can then get flagged up automatically by sort of copyright services you know like on youtube where it flags you up and bits and pieces like that so it just adds a bit of um extra tagging and information within your file then apart from that it's relatively straightforward and then you just click export and this is where i want to explain a little bit more about your exporting options so the format you can have as wav or you can have as aiff if you're basically doing it to iTunes and then you've got FLAC if you're doing it to basically CD or anything like that more of a hard hardware physical format and because we've only got one track here we want the current file so that's perfectly fine but if you're obviously exporting multiple tracks like I mentioned for an album then obviously you want to be going into 
all files, which will then export them individually. And then again, like I mentioned, if you're doing, if you want to do like an iTunes release with a full album and you just want them continuously back to back, or you're doing it for a VLC file where you just separate it by cue points, then do an audio montage. And then obviously you can set your cues within there as well, which will then automatically be depicted by the separate audio files within this timeline above us here. But obviously we've only got one track, so we want a current file. So we want that as a WAV. Then we want it as sample rate 44.1 hertz because that's sort of like an industry standard. If you're sending something to get mastered, then typically they may ask you to do it at 4,800. But uh, for our export for today, 44.1 is a standard and that's good to go. Resolution, 16 bits. If you're doing anything sort of maybe digitally, like online streaming services, maybe go... Um, maybe go a little bit higher or if, in fact if you're sending off something for mastering you want to go a bit higher because mastering is essentially a destructive process you want to give them as the highest possible file as you can so i'll probably go for 24 bit for that but if you're just maybe putting it up on soundcloud or you're doing it for a cd 16 bit is more than fine now dithering dithering is a an extremely boring subject but if you want to get into dithering then by all means, go and, and sort of Google it. But I'll give you a bit of a rundown. So dithering is basically the process where it helps the digital signal output a lot smoother uh, depending what format you're going on to. So dithering basically adds like a little bit of noise to join the gaps between the various samples. So if you imagine in the analog world, sound is basically dictated by movements in the air so it's a continuous thing it's a natural thing but then in the digital domain it's separated by bits and samples so a bit rate is basically your sort of amplitude if you like up and down and your sample rate is your steps going along the frequency so sometimes within analog to digital conversion there can be some errors and some steps that are missed and it can create sort of distortion or some uh, kind of the peculiar artifacts within your digital file. So dithering can help sort of mask that and help fill in those sort of gaps between the, the various steps, the sample rate steps. And these different ones here are basically different shapes. So some will be better for vinyl if you're if you're exporting to do that, or some might be better if you're burning to C D or some something along those lines. So R R P D F stands for rectangular position distribution function, I think it is. Uh, and then T PDF is triangular. So the TPDF and, and the RPDF are not too much different. Um, there's just a little bit more, you can hear it a bit more with the RPDF and then the TPDF is just basically a lot less noticeable. As I say, it's, it's very boring. It's not really that interesting and it's not really that useful in terms of if you're just doing it for online stuff because if you have a sound card that will basically it's, it's known as what's called self dithering so it will automatically convert the analog to digital signal for you so you don't necessarily need dithering anyway uh custom suffix just leave that as it is and then we're going to click on export and then obviously we want to save that to perhaps our desktop and then it will just export it'll run it through like that now, if you're on your DAW, you might notice that you can actually have a playback and you'll be able to hear it back. But uh, within T-Rex 5, it will just sort of play it through quickly for you like this. And it's always good to know that it's going through a little bit slowly because, you know, it's capturing every single bit of data within that track as well. So the exporting is very, very reliable there as well. So once this is finished doing this, we'll just have a quick look at what's happening uh, on the desktop and just have a quick listen back, make sure it's all there. Okay, so then let's go onto our desktop. People do nothing. I've been sleeping all my And there we go. There is our exported track. So it's pretty straightforward. You just obviously got to make sure that you understand sort of the dithering options and what file format you want to go to as well. Ideally, you don't want to be uploading. In fact, I don't think any website actually accepts FLAC or uh, AIFF files. So if you're uploading up online, typically go with WAV. Uh, if you're doing it to CD, definitely go with FLAC. But uh, apart from that, you're all good to go. So join me on the rest of the course and I'll be talking over some more options and other bits and features within T-Rex 5. I've been Rory from High Production and you've been watching Sonic Academy, so stay tuned.